Hello, it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books I read in March. I read eight books total, mostly horror, but with a few other random things in there. First up is Styx by Christopher Hyde and I buddy read this with my friend Anna. We met initially through Instagram some time ago and she has also just recently started a booktube channel so I wanted to give a big shout out to her. She already has a few videos up, I will leave her linked below so please do go check her out and show her some love. She's awesome and is also a big horror fan so yeah please go check her channel out. I'll leave her Instagram linked below as well so go take a look at that too. And yeah recently we decided to buddy read sticks together this was originally published in 1982 and it's one I'd picked up a while ago. Um, I think it was at a library book sale like last year or something and it's from Playboy paperbacks and on the spine it says occult. So that combined with like bones on the cover, <laughs> you know, got me thinking in a certain direction. And from the synopsis on the back I could understand that it was about uh, cave exploration and so I just assumed, putting these pieces of the puzzle together, that it would maybe be something to do with stumbling upon some Neanderthals and, you know, ending up being part of some awful ritual and everyone getting killed. Yeah, it's just where my mind went anyway, naturally. But it's not that at all. I wouldn't put it really in the horror category. I wouldn't put it in a cult at all. It's more of a thriller, I guess, um, kind of an action adventure type story. But yeah, to get on to what it's actually about, it's about a group of people who are exploring a newly discovered cave in what was at the time Yugoslavia, and they end up getting trapped in there and have to try and figure out another way out of this cave system. And I think the good points of it were there was actually a really interesting cast of characters. There were both men and women, all with kind of different backgrounds, different skill sets, and from different countries. So that was pretty cool. The female characters did start off pretty one-dimensional, but a couple of them actually were really well developed. Um, and one in particular had quite an interesting storyline, which I thought was handled really well. So that was also cool. And there were also some pretty gnarly death scenes as this group of people are working their way through this cave system. So that was also one thing that I thought was done really well. Unfortunately I did feel the story was quite slow at times and there were lots of things that were kind of dragged out and didn't really need to be. So yeah, overall it was a decent read, it was good and I rated it three stars. Next up I read Agency by William Gibson. Now I don't typically read a lot of science fiction, or in fact very much at all, but I have read every novel by William Gibson, I think he's fantastic, and I have been anticipating his newest novel for a couple of years now. The release date kept getting pushed back and pushed back, and anyway, it eventually came out earlier this year and I got my hands on a copy from the library. Agency is a sequel to his prior novel, The Peripheral, so I won't go into too much detail of what happens, but I know some people have said you can read it as a standalone. I would actually disagree with that. I think there's a lot of information and characters that you get to know in The Peripheral that would be helpful to know about before jumping into Agency, but yeah, that's just my thoughts. So Agency is about a character who is hired to test out a new app. There are a lot of interesting characters and really high-tech technology and stuff like that which is all really well done. I really enjoyed being back in William Gibson's world and his writing. It was a very fast, slick, compelling read. I really enjoyed it and I rated it four stars. 
Then I read a bit of non-fiction. This was Paperback Crush by Gabrielle Moss. This is all about teen fiction from the 80s and 90s and it's one published by Quirk who also did Paperbacks from Hell. So I went into it expecting something similar to Paperbacks from Hell and it is and it isn't. I think it's definitely not as in-depth as Paperbacks from Hell. I think Paperback Crush is much more of a broad overview of those kind of books rather than the really detailed Paperbacks from Hell. Paperback Crush is split up into different chapters like friendship and romance and terror which was obviously the one I was looking forward to and even though the books in the terror chapter were the only ones that I really had any familiarity with, the only ones that I you know read when I was younger, I'm really glad I read the whole book because it was really interesting and I think even though it was more of a broad overview it was still entertainingly written and there was plenty of information still there on these different subgenres. And of course it has lots of book covers in there which are always really cool to look at. I had seen some other reviews talking about how the author focuses maybe a little too much on the negative aspects of teen fiction from this era, the fact that they weren't very at, or at all diverse and just yeah some of the messages within these books probably weren't the best and I think I'm glad I knew that going into it because it might have been a bit jarring had I not already been aware of it. It just felt a bit counterproductive to kind of trash these books in a book that should be celebrating them. So yeah, it was a bit of an odd angle to take. It was still a good read. I think as long as you go into it knowing that it's more of a broad overview rather than a really in-depth look at this era of fiction, then yeah, you'll probably enjoy it. I rated it three and a half stars. Then I read Annabelle by Ruby Jean Jensen. This is about a little girl who explores this abandoned mansion near where she lives and she finds these dolls that she starts to play with. This was really good, I really enjoyed it, I rated it four stars. I do have a separate review video for this so I will leave that linked below if you want to hear more of my thoughts about it. Next up I read Let's Go Play at the Adamses by Mendel W. Johnson. This was originally published in 1974. It's about a babysitter who is tied up and tortured by the kids she's looking after and their friends. I have a separate review video for this as well which I'll leave linked below. It was a four star read for me. I thought it was brutal but brilliant. Next up I read Strange Angels by Kathy Koja. This was a five star read for me. I absolutely loved it. It was another kind of hard read like Let's Go Play at the Adamses but in a different way. They both made me cry so yeah I guess that's something. This one is about a photographer who becomes obsessed with these drawings that his art therapist girlfriend brings home and he seeks out the person who drew them who is a schizophrenic man in his late 20s and they form a friendship but this friendship changes over time and deteriorates and yeah I won't say too much more about it. Guess what? I have a separate review video for this one too so I will leave that linked below if you want to go check it out but yeah this was an amazing five star read for me. Then it was my birthday and I thought I would reach for a birthday themed point horror book. This is Sweet Sixteen by Francesca Jeffries. This is about a girl called Leslie. It's in the run up to her 16th birthday and she's planning a big party and everything but she seems to have this really bad string of luck. Everything seems to be going wrong and she starts to wonder if someone is specifically causing all of these horrible things to happen to her. I thought this one was really good. It was kind of your typical point horror in the sense that, you know, we'd got some good relatable characters, a pretty compelling storyline, some twists and turns and plenty of suspects and I didn't actually guess who it was at the end so that was really good. But I guess on the other side of it being 
a typical point horror is that unfortunately it didn't really bring anything new to the table but it was an entertaining read I did really enjoy it as I was reading it and I rated it three stars and last but not least I read the labyrinth novelization by ACH Smith I finished this on April the 1st actually but close enough and this the film is about a teenage girl called Sarah who wishes that the Goblin King would come and take her baby stepbrother away but doesn't actually realize that the Goblin King is real or that he is gonna steal this baby away so she then has 13 hours to solve the labyrinth and save the baby from the clutches of Jareth the Goblin King the film is one of my all-time favorites it's one I saw as a kid and have seen countless times since. I'm actually not a big fan of musicals at all but this is like one of the few exceptions and yeah I love the soundtrack, the creativity and the imagination that is here in the film is just so good, it's so magical and yeah it's brilliant, it makes me laugh and it makes me cry and yeah just all of the emotions and it's really really fun. And I really enjoyed the book too, I thought it was mostly pretty close to the film. There were certain bits that were either slightly different or certain scenes that were maybe a bit expanded upon as to what was in the film. I think it's a great story with plenty of weird and wonderful characters. The book was well written and overall I rated it four stars whereas the film does get a five star from me obviously. So those are all of the books that I read in March. I had a pretty good reading month overall. Let me know if you've read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts on them or tell me what your favourite book that you've read recently was. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!